Hey guys, Ashton here with Muse Themes. I've got not only a really exciting new widget release to share with you today, but a really big and powerful one. This is our Nav System widget, which is a very versatile and highly customizable navigation widget for Muse with a ton of different styling options included. Now this widget was built for reliability and is intended to serve as a rock solid menu option that can be used on any type of site, especially on mobile devices. Now the genesis of this widget actually came from discussions of wanting more menu options for mobile specifically, but as you'll see this one got beefed up way beyond the original call to action. So looking here at our live demo, when I activate our navigation, we get this really neat transition motion bringing up our navigation into view. Now everything you see here are elements that are added and styled within the widget. None of this are items that were just placed on the Muse canvas. We of course have our logo sitting here at the top. We have a variety of links here with a nice rollover effect. We also have regular text here that's not hyperlinked, kind of serving as like category headers. And we also have our social media links here towards the bottom. This widget can also accept custom HTML, which can be utilized in a variety of different ways, maybe for things that don't fit into other menu types. You could use it to display blocks of text or pretty much anything you want if you've got the code to support it. And lastly, this widget can support up to two levels of sub-menus, which is awesome, especially for larger sites. We can see that when we click any of these links here with the arrows, we get swiped over to a sub-menu, all of which is completely, again, customizable in the widget settings. Now, as we've done a few times over, there's going to be two separate versions of this widget available to you upon download, an Essentials version and a Pro version. Now the pro version, as shown here, will have every single feature that we could pretty much muster up and can be used as your flagship menu widget. It'll fully support complex sites and layouts involving separate categories, images, social media, what have you. However, the essentials version is great for those with perhaps a simpler need for their navigation. If you only need a handful of links and don't require headers or the social links, then the essentials would be a great place for you to start and it can be set up pretty quickly. Now, we have a lot to cover here, so buckle your seatbelts. And what I'm gonna do is actually split up this tutorial into two parts. This first part, I'm just gonna cover the basic functions of the widget, and we'll walk through the setup of the Essentials version from scratch. And then I'm gonna save the intricacies of the Pro version for part two. So let's jump right in. I'm gonna get into Muse. And I do have the matching project file here for our live demo with the Pro version. But first, like I said, I wanna create a brand new blank site to walk you through the Essentials version setup. Once we have the nuts and bolts down, it'll make our pro version that much easier to master. So with a blank page, I'm going to open up my Muse library. And as you can see, we have both the pro and essentials version selectable here. And I'll go ahead and drag out an essentials version. Now all you're going to get initially are these two widget components. Now there are a lot of settings to cover, but honestly, it's not really as intimidating as the length of these videos might suggest. Our two components here are the configuration and our loader. Now, if you've dabbled at all with our Media Pro Gallery widgets as of late, you're going to be familiar with some of this framework already. But before I jump in, I'm going to create a button. Now, you can create any button that you want using any graphic of your choosing. I'm just going to drag out a simple state button from the standard Muse widget library. I'll go ahead and right click and select Clear All Styling and Clear All Widget Contents. And just to save time, I'm not going to get fancy with this one. I'm just going to give this a color fill and we'll call it a day. There. So now we need to assign it a graphic style. So with the button selected, we're going to go to my graphic styles panel and we'll make a new style. I'll go ahead and call this one open as this will be what opens our menu. Great. And what I'm going to do is place this button on the top right corner of our page. Now the placement of your button will be reflected in the browser as it stands. However, the placement of your widget components here does not matter. And I'd highly encourage you to organize them neatly off to the side, off of your workspace, as it can get pretty messy and confusing as you start duplicating your loaders. But for right now, for the sake of the tutorial, I'm going to leave them right here front and center. So let's start with our first component. This is our configuration. The first field here is our graphic style, which already says open by default, but just make sure that you type whatever style that you created in there. And we also have our overlay transition type. These are the two options here for the essentials version. You can have it slide down from the top or have it zoom in from the center. I like zoom, so I'm going to leave it at that for now. Now this next section here is menu styling. I'm actually going to come back to this because we need to get a menu set up first before any of the styling settings will show in the browser. So let me close out of this panel 
and I'm going to jump right into our loader. Now inside the loader here, it's quite long, you can see five separate sections, all for five separate menu items. Now as you probably figured out, you can duplicate this loader component as many times as you want. You are not limited to five menu items. But I'm just going to make a few buttons for the sake of the demo. Let's start with the first item. These first two are check boxes. Now you need to check enable item if you're going to add any element here at all. And you need to check enable item icon if you wish to have an icon appear for this item. So we'll leave both of those checked for now. And actually I'm going to make three buttons, so I'll enable the first three elements. Next is the menu item text. Now this is of course what you want the text to actually say. So let's make three buttons. We'll have one for home, portfolio, and contact. Menu item ID. This just needs to be a number. It can be any number you want, but the loader here comes with a default setting of one through five, which you can totally leave that as it is. The thing you just need to keep in mind here is that every menu item needs to have a different ID. So if you start duplicating your loader, just make sure you continue the sequence, like with six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and so on. Parent ID, I'm gonna come back to this one because this only applies if you're gonna make this a sub-menu item. Menu item type. Now what this does is allow you to set if the text will be an actual link or if it's just sitting there as placeholder text. So we're gonna leave all of these three as links for now. And you can of course type your own URL here for each one. And I can just leave these as Muse themes for now. Menu item icon. This is actually a really cool integration from Font Awesome. If we really quick switch back over to our configuration component, you'll find a direct link in here in the panel, taking us to a huge list of icons over on the Font Awesome website. So all we have to do is pick an icon. Let's say I want this address book icon. All I have to do is click it, and it will take me over to another page with the icon code. So you'll want to select this code and copy it, but keep in mind you do not need this first FA and dash. All of the proper coding has already been implemented into the widget to work with Font Awesome. All you need is what follows, in this case, address dash book. So we'll copy it, back to our loader in Muse. Now we can see the default heart icon has already been implemented, but I'll go ahead and add our address book to our contact link by pasting the code there. Perfect. And our last option is the target, which allows you to set the hyperlink to open in the same browser tab or a new one. We'll leave this as the same for now. So from here, let's give this a browser preview. All right, and we have our custom button sitting here on the top as expected. We'll give it a click. And there we go. We had our nice zoom in effect. And of course, we need to do a lot of styling in here in regards to the fonts and the sizing and the background overlay. But we already have a really slick functioning menu to which I can, of course, click any of these links to get to my destination site. And I'll switch back. And then lastly, our close button will reverse the zoom animation. So that's awesome. So let's take this a step further and add some sub menus. I'm going to duplicate our loader which you can do by simply copy and pasting, or you can just hold Alt on your keyboard while you click and drag. Now what's cool here is that even though I didn't fill all five items in the first loader, I can still move on to another loader and it won't affect the site. And this is gonna be really helpful to you when you're working with multiple loaders and you're aiming to keep them organized for their own categories and such. So we'll open the settings panel and it's a direct duplicate. So we're just gonna have to make a few changes in here. I'm gonna make two sub pages and we can fill the menu item text fields the same as before. I'll make one called web and graphic. Now keep in mind, these are new elements, so I need to give them new menu IDs. And we'll just keep it simple. I'll just label these as six and seven. Great, now we're almost ready to go, but the only difference we're gonna do here is assign these guys a parent item ID as well. Now, right now they're set default to zero, which would keep them as top level pages. But if we take the menu item ID from another link and type it here, that will then become the parent to these links. So for example, let's say I want these to be sub menu pages for my portfolio link. Well, then all I have to do is go back to our first loader with our main pages, 
and you can see our portfolio link has a menu item ID set to two. So all I have to do is go into my sub pages and I'll type the number two into all the parent item IDs. And it's that simple. I can preview this in the browser once again, and there we go. We now get some arrows by our portfolio link. And when we click, we get switched over to our sub menu with our web and graphic links. And we can click to go back. Now, if I click the word portfolio, I'm still taken away to our original hyperlink. Now, why is that? Well, if we go back to the original loader, remember that we have the option to set any element to be a link or a placeholder? Well, since we've made portfolio a parent of a sub menu now, we should probably change this from a link to a placeholder. So now if I preview in the browser again, and we click portfolio, it takes me right to our sub menu, which is pretty cool. Now, the last thing we need to cover here is our menu styling that I skipped over earlier, found inside our configuration component. Now, even for an essentials version, there's still a lot of options here, so I'm not gonna cover them all in detail, but definitely play around and have some fun. This first group is for your background overlay settings. You can change the color and the opacity. Right now it's set to 0.95, which is almost solid. One would be your highest, displaying at 100%. We also have our menu top margin spacing setting here. This allows you to change the spacing for the top of the menu in relation to the top of the page. Next here we have our text styling. So we got fonts, colors, sizing, all that good stuff. Down here is our sub-menu indicator settings. So remember those little arrows that appear next to a sub-menu link? Well, this is where you can customize that. And then lastly is a bunch of settings for the back button. So still lots to offer here, but you'll find even more in our pro version, which we're gonna cover in the next video. So thanks again for watching, guys. Make sure to switch over to part two to see everything that our pro version has to offer. And of course, in the meantime, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, don't hesitate to let us know. I'll see you soon.